The idea behind Shamir secret sharing is that if you have some piece of data, some, some reasonably short secret piece of data, so like a Bitcoin seed, then you can split this up into multiple pieces that will allow you to reconstruct it. And so why would you do this? Well, if you have something like a Bitcoin seed, there's inherently a trade-off that you have to make where if you want your data to be resistant, if you want it to be accessible, right? If you want to not lose it and to be able to recover it, you kind of want to make it pretty accessible. So here's, by the way, like this is a, a crypto steel tube. Let me just unscrew this and, and show off for people who aren't familiar. There's all these tiles here with data. But there's a trade-off, right? So I can have this here. It's all nice. It's just sitting on my desk and like I'm showing it off on podcasts and stuff. But all right, so that's easy. I'm not going to lose it. You know, it's sitting beside my computer. But the trade-off, of course, is that if it's easy for me to access, it's easy for anybody to access. So I have to worry, you know, are people going to come into my home? Are they going to steal this? Is it going to be a target somehow? Maybe I would want to go further. Maybe I'd want to have more than one copy, right? So I have my copy here that anybody can take. Um, if I really want to protect it against like a natural disaster or something, then I would probably want to have another copy that's somewhere else that I can't even keep an eye on it kind of thing. So there's this trade-off here where I can either make this really accessible and redundant and then increase the risk of theft, or I can make it not very accessible and not very redundant and increase the risk that I'm going to lose it. Okay, and that's a trade-off. That's just a trade-off that you have to make with when you're storing secret data like this. And so Shamir Secret Sharing lets you make this trade-off in a bit of a more nuanced way, where it lets you split your data into multiple pieces, and you can set a threshold, typically two or three. And if you have fewer pieces than the threshold, you don't learn anything about the secret. But if you have threshold many pieces, then you learn the whole secret. So it's not like I'm splitting it into like multiple pieces and spreading them everywhere. Like, you know, as the more you collect, the, the more you know about the secret kind of thing. There's actually this like sharp cliff here where you go from knowing nothing at all as you get one, two shares, and then you get the third one, and then you know the whole thing. It's the way that this works. And so this lets you kind of do this nice trade-off where if you want to have something that's this very, um, I guess, redundant and resistant to people losing shares and, and stuff, you can create a whole bunch of these different shares. But if you're worried about them being compromised, you can increase the threshold. So what you might do, for example, is a two of three or, or a three of five maybe is, is kind of a, a, a threshold that I would recommend. So you have five different tubes that are all floating around the world, um, you know, being held by trusted friends and family and, and lawyers and so forth. And any three of them will let you reconstruct the secret. So you can lose up to two of them and still be able to recover your secret. And you can have up to two get compromised. And in either case, you're still fine. And again, hopefully you notice a compromise, although that might be harder to notice, right? It's like somebody is just rifling through stuff. So you can put tamper-proof stickers on these and, and get some sort of hint that they've been accessed. So three of five gives you this nice benefit where you have a bunch of tubes distributed, but you need three to be compromised in order for your coins to be stolen, or you need three to be lost before you actually lose them. So you have like quite a bit of quite a bit of room to make mistakes here. <laughs>